now. Uh, let's see. There we go. We're officially recording. Okay. So question number one for you, Daniel Carlock, founder of the Maricopa Native Seed Library. <laughs> Why did you decide to develop the Maricopa Native Seed Library? Well, a few things kind of came together at once. Um, over the last 10 years, I've been building a home garden. Um, I bought this foreclosed property that was really a mess, and um, no one had done anything with the landscape, even though the house had been there since like the late 60s, and it was all bare dirt, and it was about a half an acre, and I really um, was into plants, but I had only just grown them in pots, because I just, I was, you know, it's college student and apartment dweller, so I started planting all these native plants, things I had in pots for years, um, a saguaro I had in a pot for like eight years, and just started putting all these native plants in, and um, the more I got going, the more I got into it, and learned about more plants and it just kept going and going. Um, I kind of exhausted all the native plants that I could find um, in the Phoenix area. And then I discovered the nurseries in Tucson and kept going and going. And I have probably, I don't know, I'd have to look at my count. I know I have at least, I think I have about, I have about 100 species here. So I got really into it and then I had people like stopping and getting out of their cars and asking me about my plants and things like that. And so I'm like, I know there's like an interest and, you know, so a lot of that kind of came together. And then um, as I started, you know, kind of reading more about climate change and seeing things that were going on, I just felt like there was more of an impending, uh, like a real uh, urgency to get more people growing native plants in their yards because we can't guarantee that our forests are going to be here the way they are, you know, and, and um, reading some of Doug Tallamy's books, you know, about kind of bringing nature home and this idea of establishing like a, a, a new national park that's all of our yards connected together and providing habitat for wildlife across all these interconnected yards got me really excited and that's kind of the mission of the seed library is to try to to make some inroads on that. Nice. So for anyone cool. who may be from out of the area, this is basically based in Phoenix, Maricopa, Central Arizona, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you kind of touched on this already, but why is a resource for native seeds important? So one of the things I found was that not a lot of the nurseries here have, have the full range of native plants. What you see when you're out hiking and what you see at the nurseries is like a pale, it's, it's a, just a fragment of what's really out there. And the more I get into the iNaturalist app and taking pictures and and um, having people help me identify them, I started realizing that even, you know, several years into this planting that I had here with all these native plants, there was so much more. And why didn't I have it in my yard? Because there was nowhere to buy it. You know what I mean? It wasn't available commercially. And so the native seed library kind of fulfills a niche where people can get seed for things that they can't even get at the nurseries, unless they go to Tucson, which you know, some people will, but yeah. <laughs> it's a lot to ask. <laughs> We're a little envious of Tucson. <laughs> they have a lot of great native plant resources. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Wildflower seeds and even just simple shrubs that you see, not simple, that's not a good way to put it, but you know, common shrubs that you see out along the trail aren't available in nurseries here. Um, yeah. Uh, so where did- Baker, Baker used to. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I felt like I felt like Baker's had as much as anybody, but there, you know, now I haven't been to the new ones that you said the Baker uh, employees have started. But um, I, that was my only source for for the natives, and certainly one good reason to do it is that they don't they aren't they don't need to be pampered. Native seeds. <laughs> I think a good answer to why to do it is they're so much easier their cultivation is so much easier right but i'm not speaking as knowledgeably as you go ahead danielle i just wanted to add that thank you <laughs> insert that i think the uh the tricky part is getting them to germinate right danielle <laughs> yeah and some of them are still a mystery to me and i haven't yeah <laughs> there's right. quite a few that i've labeled as unknown germination in the seed library <laughs> which is where, you know, people using them and planting them, we can use that information from what they find out too. Um, so where did the seed come from that you have in the library? 
Yeah, so most of it I'm collecting on the Tonto National Forest. They were good enough to give me a permit and uh, keep renewing it. So that's been really good. I've been out there since, um, I guess, March. It took a while. I, I was surprised. But, um, but once I got going by April, May, I was really getting into the seed collecting. And most of my seed is from the Tonto. But I've also been collecting from home for certain things I haven't really been able to find that much or commonly on the Tonto. And then the Scottsdale Community College, um, campus has some really good native gardens that I've been collecting from there as well. Those are my three sources, really. Awesome. So, so can so people help you collect these? I feel like I, I feel like I should offer to help. That seems like um, an onerous task. And I certainly, if you need volunteers for seed collecting, I want to, you know, repay you for your kindness by helping you collect seed if that if you're looking for volunteers yeah i really appreciate that i mean that's something i'm thinking of maybe putting together a workshop on that and thinking about kind of doing some of that especially because next year when i have to go back to being a librarian i won't be able to be out in the forest during the week you know collecting and things like that and if i really want to keep the seed library sustainable probably will need some volunteers and so but now with Absolutely. covid being so weird you know i don't you know with things being the way they are it might take some time to do that but i think i'd like to put together a workshop on that and get volunteers great yeah that great. would be great especially you know because you do have to have proper permitting especially where you're going and it's not mm -hmm. you know just going out and grabbing things and knowing how to do right. it sustainably as well mm -hmm. um do you have a method that you use to make sure that you're not over harvesting or yeah yeah, the Bureau of Land Management has this SOS protocol, mm -hmm. Seeds of Success protocol that I follow. And it's really just essentially that you don't take any more than 20% of what's available um, at a given time, you know, and I usually don't even hit that much, you know what I mean? So um, that's really the main thing is making sure that most of the seed is able to go back to where it's, where it is. Yeah, oh. leaving some to stay. And I know when I went out collecting with the SOS program, we also would count like at least five plants and then the fifth one. Yeah, that's another from, part. And then, yeah. Yep. Making sure you have a population. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that's even, a little bit tricky too sometimes with some of these plants. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh. So. Yeah, good. What do you think the most interesting seed in the library is, in your opinion? Oh, it's actually the ones <laughs> I haven't been able to collect, the ones that are driving me crazy that I'm seeking. Um, there was a, there's a wild crop relative of tepary beans that I found up at Seven Springs, and I was really excited because there's a lot of activity right now on conserving these wild crop relatives, and um, it's called slim leaf bean. And I found it up at Seven Springs right near the stream side, but this, the pods weren't ready yet. So I came back like two oh, weeks later. The whole thing was mowed down by cattle. Um, they're running through there. I, I talked to Steve Jones. He was saying, yeah, I think that nobody has leasing um, permits there, but they've gotten in because there's not enough oversight or something in the area. I don't know, but it was really disturbing because I don't know if I'll be able to get those now. But it, those are the ones that are most intriguing are the ones I cannot get. There's a few others like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. So we've kind of answered these other questions already. Repeat for me again how many seeds about you have in the library? You know, I have no idea because <laughs> um, – they were collected in the brown paper bags and then they get moved into, well, they get processed and then moved into canisters. And I have um, a mid-sized refrigerator, you know, like bigger than the little tiny office ones, but not as big as a, a kitchen refrigerator, mm -hmm. full of seed. I took a picture, right? but I'm not sure how to, I'd have to take over the screen <laughs> to show, but they're all, and that's not all of it because I still have stuff I haven't processed yet. And I've packed up 600 seed packets that are wow. already packed up and I'm, I have a lot. So I've, I collected a lot. And some of the plants are really prolific. I mean, like um, Lisa can attest to that's here, the Bebia. Bebia. You know, <laughs> stars of that one. I mean, that, and yeah. Carrie, I, I could like give away that for a long time. I have so much. And certain ones are just so much more prolific. There's more plants and they're mm -hmm. more prolific in their seed production. And others are, you know, I don't have enough seed to give out of certain ones. And it's kind of a bummer. Right. 
are there species that you're really interested in that you don't have seed from yet? I think you just answered that um, one of them, but are there yeah. any other ones? Yeah, there's one called uh, Mirabilis multiflora, which is um, mm -hmm. a small, smallish shrub, I guess, with these really big showy purpley flowers. And I've only seen it out like once or twice. I've managed to get like a little handful of seeds and I, you know, I haven't been able to track it down. The plant's just not very common. Right. As well as some of the milkweeds, you know, I've been able to get tons of subulata because I have that at home and it's been really prolific. Um, but some of the other milkweeds, I can't find them. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> is there any, so talk about, let's talk really quick because we're at about 15 minutes and I wanted to open it up to everyone sure. for them to be able to ask, but are th is there any interest in rare plants and rare plant seed? Yes, actually, well, I don't know if it's exactly rare. I thought it was rare, but I asked um, the Tonto National Forest to issue, to include in the permit, um, oh, I lost it. It's the Panamint Live Forever, the, um, if somebody knows. Dudley like, uh, Saxo. Yeah, Dudley uh, Saxo, <laughs> yeah, that guy. And I That's thought. That's my trivia be... question. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think they would let me collect it because I thought it was, mm -hmm rare enough but he said no you're okay that one's fine i'm not worried i have no concerns about that but then i found um like in i think it was like in may and i had to climb up a cliffside to get to these things <laughs> but i found them and I, I collected them and i they were dried seed pods or dried flowers i don't know and then when i got them home i had to get under a hand lens and i can't find any seed in there and i'm like i don't know what happened but i was hoping to have enough and then maybe work with the Cactus and Succulent Society to propagate that one. And because it is relatively uncommon, I would say it has a very niche, like a very um, my, small microclimate. Mm -hmm. And I'm worried about it because I've been seeing a lot of brome um, around it, like invading into these, uh, these niches. It likes, it likes like cliff sides that are rocky, like north, yep. yeah, rocky mm -hmm. that are like kind of north facing. It needs some shade. And, uh, but I was seeing a lot of brome and, uh, you know, it's scaring me. Yeah. So I'm hoping that maybe, I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know what was going on. It was the right time of year and everything. So I don't know if they didn't get pollinated. I don't know. Yeah. In uh, thinking about that plant specifically, I've seen it in the superstitions. That was the first time I ever really saw that plant. And thinking especially about the fires that have been happening um, and how this project <sighs> is so vital also for those purposes. You know, if we ever get to the point where we have enough seed for restoration, and if we get into that, which we're trying, you know, especially now that we've had so many large scale fires lately, but what you're yeah. doing is very important and much appreciated. <laughs> um, sorry, go ahead. I just say I love doing it, but it is like I think somebody mentioned, it's very definitely time and labor intensive. You got to get out there, you got to hike um, yeah. out. You know, sometimes I come back with very little, and other times I come back with a bumper. It just depends on what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up, everyone. Uh, you can unmute yourselves if you'd like to. And I have one question in the chat box. We'll start with that one, and then we'll open the floor. Um, if everyone, does everyone see the reactions at the bottom? Maybe we can raise hands or if it gets too out of control. But um, the first question in the chat is, have you ever been able to collect any seeds from the Mariposa lily? No, I haven't seen that one. Is that, do you, what is the genus? Is that the Cal Cal Calicordia? Calicordia? Yeah, it was <laughs> on my list. I actually had a target list of like, I don't know, 70, 80, maybe more species that I wanted to collect. And I've only maybe gotten about 50 of those. So that was one that I just haven't seen. I just haven't seen. Mm -hmm. I think I saw it blooming once, but then you, you know, that's the thing is it's all about timing. You go out and it's blooming. And then if you don't come back in the right window, you know, you, it's gone a lot yeah. of times. Some things stay on the plant longer. It depends on the plant, you know, some things stay longer and some don't. Yeah. Yeah, that one, I don't see huh. as much here as upper elevations. I see it more at higher elevations. Um, the next question we have in the chat is, did you collect any seeds from areas that later burned in the Tonto? 
Mm. So I guess in the bushfire or the rolls fire area um, up into. Yes, yes, because I think that um, the first water trailhead has been closed because of the fire. I don't know exactly where the fire was happening in there, but it was closed somewhere between first water and Peralta. And I did a lot of collecting in there, especially um, first water and Dutchman as like a loop through the washes there. And there were quite a few butterflies. The last time I was there was, um, I think I got in in May and there were quite a few butterflies um, and plants and good stuff. And I don't yeah. know what's, I'm afraid to go back. That's the Me thing. Too. I, don't, I can't I know stomach it. Yeah. The one time that I went out to help you collect seed and we found that Dutchman, the pipeline. I think yes. about that and it makes me sick. I, just so I know. And I looked for it that day and I didn't see it, but it, it was so, mm -hmm. there's so uh, brushy there and there's so much in that area. Like it was, yeah. it was underneath stuff. I couldn't get to it. Uh, we just have a comment in the chat. I used to see Mariposa Lily on the way to Seven Springs, but nothing this uh, year. I, I didn't see it. And I went there pretty regularly between May and, and now. Which Seven Springs also burned. <laughs> Yeah, not in the riparian area, but um, just as you're before you get to it. Yeah, Lisa you know, said that you can sprinkle some of your seeds if and when you go back because <laughs> you've got the genetic material. Yeah, now. <laughs> that's an interesting point, isn't it? Yes, yeah. I should do that. Okay, does anyone want to ask verbally any questions? Sure, I have a question. Okay, Kristen, um, go ahead. I am curious how you can and please tell me if I was like spacing out when you, if you covered this already, but um, how do you get seeds from the seed library? I, actually, we didn't cover it. I'm Good glad question. you asked. <laughs> um, yeah, so the pandemic has wrecked quite a bit of havoc on this plan because I'd been developing this project for like a year and a half before the pandemic hit. And it was intended to, um, I was gonna be distributing seed through lots of different libraries. Uh, which would have been open to the public. Um, but now what's happened is there's been so many closures and restrictions that I have one seed library right now going at Gateway Community College, but they've restricted it to faculty, staff, and students. Um, but I'm working on some other ways. Um, had some conversations with the farmers markets and I'm hoping they're gonna let me come in. Uh, barring that, I'll come up with some other creative ways. But for now, if anybody wants seeds that's here at this um, at this meeting, you know, I can, I'll, I'll make sure to leave my email in the chat window and you'll have the website. You can contact me. We can make arrangements to meet somewhere. Or I'm also offering free landscape consultations. Um, Jessica, which is who's on here, we just met yesterday and did that. I come to your home and, uh, or I'll do it virtually if you're more comfortable with that. And we walk around and talk about your spaces and what you want to achieve. And uh, I kind of, you know, we kind of develop recommendations based on what you want to achieve and what I can come up with in my my brain as far as what might work uh, with the plants I know about not only from seed because I'm not expecting you know the seed library is just a piece of this it's really about promoting native plants and um, I'm for a lot of people I'm just giving them lists of plants that make sense for them in their um, home environments that they can grow without you know not growing from seed but getting from local nurseries that's really cool I got a um I, got yeah. an, I can't remember who I got an email from, but it was, maybe it was Gateway because I've taken classes there in the past and I saw about the seed library and I was like, this is so cool. Have I never heard of this? <laughs> um, yeah, that's great that you're a Gateway student. And um, I just put my email in the chat window. That's the, the email account for the seed library. But if anybody's interested in the consultation or if you don't want to do the consultation, I'm still happy to meet with you and get you seeds. And hopefully I'll have an announcement soon about some other locations. Cool. Um, and then second question is, um, when you get seed, when someone gets seeds from you, is there advice on how to properly make them grow? Yes, for the ones that I've figured it out for, okay. <laughs> which isn't all of them. So um, and on the seed library page, which um, I think I entered at the top of the chat window. So if you go up to the top, it's this LibGuides Maricopa. There's a section, um, there's like four drop downs and there's a select I think it says select plants drop down. And that's where you can see all the seed, uh, the plants in the seed library. And it gives you information about germination. And I, I, I categorized them as either easy, medium, or difficult. Um, easy means that I've either been able to grow up from seed myself without any special techniques, just putting it in the, you know, putting it in a pot or putting it in the ground. Or I've seen it come up as like volunteers in my yard 
or other sources told me that it was authoritative sources said that it didn't require pretreatment, which means it should germinate on its own without any fussing around, you know? And so that that's, and I tried to really heavily stack the seed library with easy, but I do have some mediums and difficult and unknowns too. Just a really quick note cool. also, Danielle has uh, information about whether it's beneficial for wildlife or pollinators, that information mm -hmm. is in there too. Cool, that's really good to know. Thanks, Danielle. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I wanted to say it was fabulous having you out yesterday. It was really was a highlight, um, I, something I won't forget for a long time, and I'm gonna peruse your suggestions that you emailed to me. Um, carefully tomorrow i was busy today couldn't you know couldn't read it i just glanced at it when the email came in but um at any rate my first goal is to get several of the good milkweeds going mm -hmm. and you were out when you were here so of course i am going to try I, the two that i want are the ones that are some people call desert milkweed and but there's mm -hmm. two different you know one is the rush and yes. the other one is that one with the broad leaf and uh, i forgot there i guess it's augustifolia or is it no it's called a uh, erosa erosa is the one with the big leaf right and it's, yeah. some people call that desert but yes. um the erosa and the sebulata are the two that are supposed to be really great for my area for attracting mm -hmm. you know to getting the larvae um so Anyway, um, I will be, you, I just look at your website and then write to you, or what did you say? You said you have some, you just didn't have any yesterday, I think, right? Oh, of Subiata? That's right. I was going to mail you some because um, I was out of those and I need to package them. This is another thing about seeds. I couldn't process some of them in the summer because I was stuck inside. And if I process the Subiata inside, all those hairs, you know, the feathery, the white, the fluffy stuff will be floating all around the house. So I have yeah, to, I've been waiting think, for it to cool off to do that. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm processing. Okay, so I have tons guy, of it. They used to make but pillow stuff. The guy like at, <laughs> the guy at um, Dig and Go today told me that they were too hard to germinate. <laughs> I haven't had trouble with them. I soak them. I soak them and then they, they start to, um, Within 24 hours, you start to see the little radical, you know, the um, the radical the, the part coming out. Good. Yes, soak them. I think that's my instructions on that one is to soak them. Uh, I mean, you can sow them outside, and they'll. I know that they'll. Some will germinate because I'm having those reseed in my yard, so they'll germinate on their own. But if you want to start it inside, oh. it's um, soak them. But the problem is when you go to transfer them to the soil, I, I often lose them in that stage. Mm -hmm. But I have we're, oh, we're right okay, you, at, do, sorry do you use rye do you use like rye hay to keep the birds from eating the seed or do you use netting what do you use to keep the birds from oh. eating the seed you've sown um actually i haven't worried about that because i just sow in gravel and i try to make sure i water it in enough that it's kind of getting down in there um, but my oh. other problem i have the problem of trying to collect the seed before things get at it you know, when it's on, like my sunflower, for example, I would have no sunflower seeds if I didn't put little organza bags around the flowers. Once they start to close uh -huh. up, I put the organza bag and now I am actually getting sunflower seed. Before that, the whole thing was, was, uh, they were, they were all eaten. I just eaten couldn't get it. Yeah. And the same thing yeah. with the milkweeds. I put the little organza bags over the, um, once they are, uh, been fertilized and they start you know, the flowers closing up and it's turning into seed, a seed pod. I put the organza bags on those because they say the milkweed bugs will um, mm. render them, uh, in, render the seeds, mm, I don't know if infertile is the right word, uh, but I'm not sure exactly the mechanism, but I was at a workshop where they mentioned it. Affects them, yeah. We're at huh. 627 right now, and this was listed for a 30-minute session. If everyone could use their reactions or put it in the chat, if they're okay going over the time, let me know, because um, we still have a giveaway to do. I've got two thumbs up. Everybody. I'm a thumbs up, but I don't have any way to show you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> 
think it's mostly thumbs up. So we'll go ahead and keep going. There's another question in the chat. Um, how did you locate plant populations or identify places to collect seed from? That's a good one. Yeah. Some of it was just um, from all the hiking I do, you know what I mean? And as I started seeing uh, out there. different things out there. Yeah. And then the iNaturalist app or SignNet will show me like where things are. So I try to kind of track them down that way too. Um, but and some of it's like kind of dumb luck <laughs> <laughs> or bad luck. I mean, I don't know. This is probably more to do with the dryness, but I went hiking um, near, um, oh gosh, what's the, the mountain near Superior? Picket Post. Mm. Uh, last Wednesday, I think it was, when we had the cool day. And I collected not a single seed on the whole six mile hike. There was nothing. Um, there was nothing. Everything <laughs> was dry. I, I saw two yeah. things flowering. Um, and uh you know there was nothing this summer's been brutal also yeah do we have any yeah. other verbal questions from anyone if you don't feel comfortable with verbal, <laughs> you're of course you're of course, <laughs> you're of course welcome to put <laughs> questions in the chat if you're not comfortable with verbal questions And I wanted to say, you know, I didn't mention it, but I do have some food plant uh, seeds mm -hmm. as well. And those have all been donations um, from really great companies. Baker Creek gave me a ton of stuff, uh, Native Seed Search and Seed Savers Exchange. So those are all really good, like kind of heirloom and desert adapt, you know, not, you know, junk seeds. And so um, I have that as well. And that's at Gateway for those of you who are, have access to Gateway or I can uh, get that to you as well. Then there's a list on the website. Everybody, it sounds like crickets. Do we have any other questions? <laughs> uh, how many seed packets so, can a person oh. get? Yes, I'm asking. Um, well, actually, when I've, when I've gone to people's houses and done the, I have so much seed that I just give freely, you know, because I'm like, you know, they've taken the extra time and, and I don't have a way to get the seed out to the public right now. So be pretty liberal with the consultations. But in the seed library proper, we're asking people not to take more than three packages a, a month, which is nice. kind of a standard seed library, you know, rule of thumb. That's good. Um, yeah. One interesting thing that just came to mind for me, it's not really a question, but uh, we were talking about Cremario, we were talking about Ratney and not being able to find those seeds because um, was it a moth larvae totally gets in there and annihilates it before you can get any seed? Oh, no, that was the one I, I thought that we, you asked me about and I said I found something that Mark Dimmitt had written, you know, from the mm -hmm. Sonoran Desert Museum that they're usually sterile, but I can't remember why. I can't remember why on that one, but there's some odd things like that. Yeah, I'm um, with Kristen. Kristen just commented in the chat that she'd love to have ah, in her yard. Me too, and yeah. that's why I was looking. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would have to be a cuttings thing. I don't, I don't know. I haven't I, even gone that far. I went out yesterday to take photos of Akatillo for the uh, October EcoQuest, which that was a giveaway for those who are here. <laughs> um, yeah, and I cracked open a few that I saw. And there was nothing. There's nothing in them. There's a little yeah. thin hole, and then you open them, and there's nothing. So if anyone in this group in this room finds Cremaria seeds, please let us know where. That would be awesome. Yeah. All right. So one more time, I'll ask if anybody has any questions, and then if I get crickets again, we'll go ahead with the giveaway. <laughs> Give about. Okay. So give me your. I have a question. Give me your favorite plant that needs to be stratified to, even though it is considered a native, but um, even, if, even though it's considered a native, it probably needs that extra babying. I guess that makes it a tough to grow one of your um, hard to, hard to germinate seeds. Or which anyone, one do you think? Actually, that's another um, part or, of it. Um, for easy. anyone here that doesn't know what stratifying is, that's cold and scarification is like scratching or roughing up the seed to get it to germinate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, well, either one. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, a lot. I actually kind of um, bypassed that by telling people, for the ones I knew that required stratification, I told people just to 
sow them in the fall because then they'll naturally stratify over the winter, you know, and then come up. So that was easier than telling people to put it in their refrigerator and go through that that whole cycle, you know, but you can do it that way too. You yeah. can force it. You can force it and then plant them yourself, you know, in the spring. But the natural way is just to put them out earlier. So a lot of our wildflowers need that. Like chia, I think, is one of them that needs that. And so I just, I called it easy. I didn't talk about stratification. I just said, put it out in the fall because I'm trying to make it easy <laughs> for people. I don't want to create more yeah. barriers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do any of them need to be scare, scar scarified or however you pronounce that? That, yeah. that you like, that you particularly like? Yeah, you know, that one we talked about yesterday, sugar sumac, russovata, it's a, um, a beautiful shrub, but it can take scarification by hot water, like a hot water soak, oh. and then the seeds will swell. There's so few like that, that you could do it as a hot water rather than a, a mechanical scarring. That is also a delicious Say it one more plant. Hmm? That is really? Also Say the plant name again? That was sugar sumac. I'm going to put it in the... Sugar sumac. It's russovata. Okay. I have a tonnage of seeds of it and I've grown out, I've got like four that I've been growing in pots for like a year that I'm going to finally plant out <laughs> this fall. Those oh, berries I want one of or, those too. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that's the right term. Are those technically berries? Yeah. I think they're the delicious. Sumacs, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, um, you can make the lemonade out of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a question in the chat. Okay. That same note, I know you have an oh. easy hard category, but what's your top recommended seed for native garden beginners? Ooh, I almost have to pull up my, uh, actually, I'm going to grab my binder right now because I have, and if anybody's looking at the website, I have a list of easy plants that are easy to grow from seed. And I'm just going to look at this list and then pull off a few. Um, blanket flower which is um, Gallardia. It's on the website. I think that's under perennials. Um, that one, and what I've done, I, here's another thing that I've done that, you know, they don't, I have just thrown the seed out there. <laughs> like I've gotten a lot of seed packages and I've just said, okay, I'm, I'm not going to go through this big hassle of moving my gravel out of the way, raking the, you know, and then doing all the stuff. So I did that when I initially started the garden, but now I have all this gravel. I just toss my seed into the gravel and like water it in and forget about it. And I had all sorts of stuff come up that way, including Gallardia, um, chocolate flowers, which I recommend everybody have in their garden because they smell like chocolate and they bloom a lot of months of the year and they're really amazing. And I have that in the seed library, that's chocolate flower. Um, a couple of other easy ones. The penstemons, you could just throw seeds out, they'll germinate, a bunch, or you could buy a couple plants at the nursery and the following year they'll reseed themselves. Um, same thing with globe mallow, will reseed itself. And what's really cool about globe mallow is you could start out with one color and get all these other colors um, with the new plants. And, and it's this excitement, like this, this year I let my globe mallows go wild. I used to pull a lot of the seedlings, but I let them go crazy in my front yard. And I had so many different colors and it was really exciting seeing what was all coming up. I did not. And know that's that. a must. I yeah, did not know it's with different colors from the same. That's so from cool. Ambigua. It's from the one called um, Sparalacia Ambigua. And the ambiguous means you know, what color you're getting. <laughs> yeah. So if you buy it at the nursery, you know, you want to know what color it is, but then you might get other ones. And so, yeah, most of them are orange, but that's the, that's like the native color, but then these other colors and um, there's a lot of cool ones. <laughs> nice. That's a whole bunch. Um, I mean, we could go on and on, but I don't want to, I don't want to kill you guys, <laughs> but look at that easy, easy grow from seed, you know, list on the seed library page. So the, the easiest beginner ones you would say would be chocolate flower, globe mallow. I think chia is probably a pretty good one too. Yeah. I, I don't think I had a lot of luck growing that in pots indoors, but mm. it reseeds, you know, um, I'm going to put together my own custom, like a wildflower mix. I'm kind of developing that now. I got some things cool. that, and then try to make that, you know, easy for people. I've gotten some really cool things that are like some of the cone flowers and, um, like the Mexican hats. And then I'm mm. going to put together like a mix that's, um, you know, a lot of nice wildflowers that are easy to, you know, to grow. I would love to see that. I think a lot of people would love to see, you know, desert chicory and, Maybe some anemone and all that would be really cool. All right. Yeah, those I missed. I didn't get, manage to collect those. 
Okay, we are at 638. One more time. Does anybody have any other questions? Give it about 15 or 30 seconds. Last call. <laughs> okay, so if you do have a question that you remember, type it in the chat and we'll get to it after the giveaway if you'd like to stay. But we have uh, for the Ecoflora, I don't know if anybody can see this, but we have buttons. We have a button, neighborhood naturalist, and also an Ecoflora sticker. And then Danielle has two seed packets. Four. So we're going four, sorry, four seed packets. So we're going to do two different giveaways. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to drop different pictures into the chat. And whoever guesses correctly first what plant it is, common name or scientific name, uh, you will win a button and a sticker and seed packets from Danielle and I. And I am so sorry, is it Jessica that's on the phone that you can't see the chat? Yeah, that's okay. I I already run the, won the lottery because she came out to my house yesterday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to drop the first photo in the chat. Is everybody ready? The computer might be a little slow. There we go. Okay. This is going to be fun. So here's the first one. We're starting off with a really easy one, just so everybody knows. Uh, and it's loading. I was hoping this would work a little bit faster than it is. So it shows as a file, but it... it's uploading. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> While we're waiting, may I say that not being able to see anybody, I'm just going solely on what I hear. Uh, Danielle, you're, you sound exactly like Miley Cyrus. No. Your voice. I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> Danielle seemed <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, I, God, I can't no. stand hearing my voice on recording. Oh, Your voice that. is very, no, it's adorable. It's Cute it's very it has something between cute and sexy. You should tape yourself and listen and you'll think so too. I bear I bet you will. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever noticed that. <laughs> We're almost all the way <laughs> uploaded. A little bit more. I really not expect this to take that long. <laughs> okay, so the ah, first photo is deep. in, and then I'm going to go ahead and start uploading the second one while we're waiting. Can everyone see that photo? No. Yeah. You have to click it to open it, I believe. That's what I'm doing. I hit download, and it's showing me pictures already on my computer. Like, <laughs> Really? Yeah, that's weird. You should be able to click to open. Oh, it wants me to save it and then. Really? Uh, okay. All right. We'll, we'll do this save. a different way. Yeah. Apologies to save everyone. it and then open this the file first. Oh. Yeah, I downloaded it, saved it, and opened it. Okay. Then we'll do this a That's different way. Bear with us, everyone. Okay. Right. So we're gonna do this this way. I'm gonna share my screen. And I'll share the okay. photo on my screen. And that way everyone can see. I think that's a better way to do it. Okay, this is better. Can everyone see that? Yes? Mm. Thumbs up. You guys see the photo or no? Yeah, yeah. Don't know okay. what it is. Okay. Uh, they should gonna, cut the flowers out I of lost, it. So. I lost the chat box. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Kristen's got Somebody it. There's a guess. Oh, oh my. First Yay. off, that was good. All right. Yeah. Yay. Chia. Very good. Oh, I'm going to show what the whole plant looks like for everyone. So you can see this is Chia. So, Kristen, you win a button and a sticker and a pack of chia seeds. 
Actually, I think Lisa responded before me. Did she? I don't I'm know. I'm so sorry, Lisa. I saw Lisa's. Oh, you did. I'm response. so sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. She. Uh, all right, Lisa. I wouldn't have gotten it if I didn't see that. So, all <laughs> fairness. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, Lisa, you win. All right, we have another one. This one is a little bit harder, so mm -hmm. we'll see how this goes. We're going to start off with the leaves and see. So I'll put that up for about 30 seconds so everyone can see. I'm going to keep a better eye on the chat this time. I was multitasking. It's a little blurry. Yeah, I zoomed in a lot. <laughs> All right. So there's the leaves. And then I'm going to stop sharing and open up the seed pods. And see if anyone can guess from the seed pods. And of course, the computer's freezing up. Perfect. Technical difficulties. You guys still with me? My screen froze up for a second. Yep. Can you still hear me? Okay. Yes. Here, one second. Next time we do this, I'm going to have people help me keep an eye on the chat. <laughs> so where do you generally, where do you live, Danielle? In Phoenix um, proper or like out in one of the other towns surrounding Phoenix? Where, where's your house that you bought? I'm pretty much on the Phoenix Scottsdale border by Cactus and 64th. Oh, cool. Right on the border, yeah. Just north of you. I'm glad you didn't have to go too far. Okay, I have it relaunched. We are ready to go. Okay, here are the seed pods. Again, blurry, I zoomed in a whole lot. Mm. That's the best clue right there. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Ah, Kristen! Uh, I've seen so many of those. Yes! Hold on, hold on. We'll the put Adonis the whole, blazing star. We'll put the whole picture up. Yay, Kristen! Okay, now I don't feel so bad for falsely announcing your last win. <laughs> 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 All right, this is the whole plant, and yes. It is. Anybody see that? So pretty. I love the white stem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it is the coolest. Menzelia multiflora. Awesome. Perfect. All right, Kristen, you officially get a pin and a sticker and a pack of Mensanilla seeds. Mensanilla, I can never say that. Mezzanilla? Menzanilla? Men Menzelia? Menzelia, there we go. I don't know. Awesome. I have, a I have a question. I forgot to ask you this yesterday. Maybe I can ask it now. Is Desert Bluebells, it looks like a beautiful plant. It's on one of my sites. I think it's on the Pollinator Group site. Um, someone put a video up of it. It's so pretty. Is that a native one that you collect or like? Or is that not really native. They called it desert bluebell. Is that, yes, that usually appears in a lot of the uh, Southwestern mixes. I don't know that I've, I can, I'm trying to think of what the, the scientific name of that one is. Um, you know, that's exactly what she said. Cause I said, I yeah. don't buy mixes. I buy everything separately. And she said, the only way you'll get it is in a mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, it's been in a lot of the mixes, <laughs> but I don't know that I've ever seen it actually in the desert here. Like the wildflowers I see in the desert here are the lupins and the yeah. poppies. I was, uh, but that yeah, one I, I don't think. Of that. 
Yeah, yeah but no, I don't it think it's more it's, like a pampered. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I mean, it's not like the Texas bluebell. It's a different one, but I don't think it's, I'd have to look it up to see where it's actually, it's probably more like a bioregionally native and I don't think it's invasive. I don't think it's going to be harmful. It's a, yeah. a, a short-lived annual and it'll just recede. It comes up with all my wildflowers each year and then goes away. So I think it would be fine, but I'd have to track that one down specifically to see where it comes from. All right. So we you're not, okay. That's, I just wondered, that's good to know. We are at 648. Do we have any last questions? This will be the absolute last call. Need Jeopardy music or something. Okay. I don't know if you hear me. I was going to ask just one question. So I'm kind of, this is my first time on here. Yeah. Well, how do I get familiar with everything that you're doing? Because it seems like you're doing a lot, Danielle. I mean, just go to your website and read through it and see what you're up yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, go to the website because I'm just getting started. This is a project that I really just launched um, in August, really. So okay. oh. um, I have some gardens I'm building that are going to be seed library demonstration gardens and some other projects. I'm going to have some workshops coming up pretty soon. I'm working with Scottsdale Public Library to do some workshops. Great. So things are coming up. So just watch the website. I do have a newsletter sign up. I haven't actually sent a newsletter or anything out yet, but I do have a sign up. I've just been kind of waiting to get that public, a good way to get the seeds to the public before I really start. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's a little weird not having that access right now. But right. yeah, the website would be the main thing. I have social media that I'm trying to keep up, up with too. Okay, cool. I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks for sharing because I really like so native much. plants. So anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Thank you for sharing this every now you know, sharing so much of your knowledge and offering this time. Well, I really appreciate all of you guys being here. This has been really energizing. There's times when I feel kind of isolated and alone and all the COVID stuff trying to do this project. And so uh, this kind of connection is really nice, probably for you know everyone to have that chance to have other people that they can yeah. talk to. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's really good to learn about your project. Yeah, yeah. And if, <laughs> if anybody's interested in doing a consult, this is the great, the best time of year because then... Um, you know, October's the prime planting season and some of the, the gardens are going to be having their sales. The Boyce Thompson's going to have their sale in October and the nurseries get geared up with a larger inventory. So it's the right time. So where's a good place to um, find out where all of the different, you know, sales are happening? Is there one, a one-stop mm -hmm. shop for finding out the dates of those things? I know you you didn't mention the desert botanical gardens as carrying native plants when we you know at the very beginning of this but i certainly would have expected that to be a good source for native seed and mm -hmm. plant but no no they typically have two sales a year i just don't know what's going on for this year but i did see that boys yeah. thompson well, is having seeds. theirs yeah um yeah the, yeah, I don't think there's a good, I mean, the Native Plant Society, actually, Lisa, who's here, she's put together a great list of the nurseries in the valley that, but I don't know that there's a list anywhere, and Lisa, jump in if you know if there's a list. Uh, anywhere I usually, um, every other season, I've updated and, and have made a list of all the different mm. plant sales that happen, um, but yeah, it's been a little difficult, um, but if, if Boyce Thompson is going to be having theirs, then I will update that on our webpage. And I don't know, Jenny, if you know if, if DBG is having theirs as well. Um, but yeah. I do plan to update that. And I do also have the Maricopa Seed Library listed as a resource yeah. for, for native plants as well. And a couple other places that are good to buy seeds, um, you know, if there's something that maybe Danielle doesn't have um, that you want to maybe buy local seeds, but through the mail. Um, but anyway, Jenny, I'll let you chime in about DBG's plant sale. Um, yes, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't know the exact dates offhand, um, but it will be, let me look up real quick because we're getting all of our uh, staff together and our planning. Kristen, do you know the dates? It's over three three-day weekends. It's the 16th through 18th, the 23rd through 20 fifth and then the 30th through the first so it's three weekends in a row and reservations are required yes in october mm. oh yeah sorry mm. Should have mentioned the month. <laughs> <laughs> thank you 
I was going to sign up for my shifts today and I didn't do it. So I would have known that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at them a lot. So that's the only reason I know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All thank right. you. Of course. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you oh, for thanks, being everybody. here and talking to us about your project. Um, Danielle has put her, her uh, email in the chat and also the address, you know, the web address for her website. Um, and you can email me also at ecoflorapx at dbg.org, ecofloraphx, um, and I can connect you to Danielle as well. And if we don't have any more questions, I think that's it. Guys, really appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks so much, everybody. Really Thank you, everyone, appreciate for you. being here. Yay. Have a great Friday Bye. tomorrow. Yep. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.